the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's rise to our faith and welcome Apostle jo Joshua Self. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. It's my joy again to be here. Lovely church. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I trust that the Lord will bless us this afternoon. In Jesus' name. Can we hold hands together and just pray in the spirit in one minute? Asking the Lord to grant us the spirit of revelation. Someone praying. The seeing eye and the hearing ear grant unto me in the name of Jesus. Shapatu sapratus kelepa hashada balakusia. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king. in the midst of all. We raise you high with our breath. Lift your hands, lift your voices, and let's worship him. And as we worship in your throne. And as we worship. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. One more time. 
and as we worship Salabras Kabaru Salabadi Dada Balada. Build your own. Holy Spirit, we receive understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you. I want to share with us very briefly um, on a few things that I believe are vital ingredients that can help a believer to excel, that can help a people to rise to the fullness. Remember, the Bible says that God gave the fivefold or fourfold, as you would like to see it, for the equipping of the saints. Are we together? That the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry. And that we all together as a family of faith will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. And so conferences like these are designed to bring us to levels of specific spiritual understanding. So that we're not shadow boxing as to what principles are responsible for what outcomes we desire. Praise the Lord. Let me start this evening um, from... One of the, the teachings of Paul to his son in the gospel, Timothy. First Timothy, please, chapter 4. Let's look at verse 15. First Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 15. It says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And then it leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will not only be there, but it will appear unto all. Hallelujah. Meditate upon this body of spiritual truth that I give unto you. Paul is teaching his son in the gospel. He says, give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting will appear unto all. The second scripture I want us to look at is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Dr. Luke is writing to Theophilus and he's showing him the basis for writing the synoptic version of the gospel according to Luke. Please leave it there. Um, it says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. We're reading to verse 4. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning, Luke is speaking now, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Verse 3. He said, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things. This is a dimension that is a possibility. That a man can sustain perfect understanding. Accurate understanding of all things from the very first. To write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. Let's read together, please. One to read. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. In other words, I do not want you to believe just because you respect the teacher. I want you to understand the basis from whence these truths came from. So that your conviction will not only be on your confidence in the teacher, but the validity of the truth. Are we together now? So that you will know the certainty that the truths you are being told and the truths that are being revealed are not cunningly devised fables. They are not opinions of a man. They are not ideas of a denomination. The certainty of the things that you have believed. It was Paul that said, for I know whom I have believed. He said, and I am persuaded. 
It's not just I know what I believe. I know the source and I am persuaded that he is able. It's important that we build convictions, that we not only believe because we trust the speaker, but we must come to a point where we understand the systems of the kingdom and we can place our faith in God and the integrity of his word. Hallelujah. So the things that by the grace of God have been communicated here upon this altar and that which I'll be sharing are not opinions. It is dangerous to teach opinions. Opinions are subjective. Are we together now? Our experiences differ. So when you build a doctrine out of opinions, it is dangerous. But the things that we communicate are truths that are backed up by God's own integrity and will walk without reservation. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Jesus <clears throat> spent three and a half years mentoring a group of people, first the twelve. And then occasionally the 70 would come and then he would have a crowd of people. And he held several conferences during his walk uh, upon the earth. And in one of those sessions, he began his mentorship session with what we call the Beatitudes. He began to teach them on the ways of the kingdom. Remember that he was introducing to them a kingdom and a concept of living are we together? That was uh, very different from that which they had known, being under the Roman government. And then when Jesus gets to chapter 13, Matthew, please, and verse 11, he makes a very interesting statement that will be the basis of my communication this evening. Jesus says, it has been given. It has been given unto you, Covenant Christian Center, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It has been given unto you to come into a place of comprehension where you understand a body of spiritual knowledge called the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now, maybe I should digress for a minute and explain to you uh, my perspective, what I believe is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God and he spoke about the kingdom of heaven. I believe, according to the authority of scripture, that the kingdom of God represents every sphere where the influence of God can reach. Where the influence of God can reach. And that includes everywhere. Heaven, earth, and hell, where can I hide from your presence? So his presence stretches to every realm and every domain of existence. Anywhere the government of God can extend to is called the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of God where in experience, the life and the culture of heaven has been allowed to find expression. Are we together now? The portion Wherever it is that the government, the culture of heaven is allowed to find expression in experience, that is the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven. So he's saying, please leave it there again, Matthew chapter 13, that there are mysteries that make heaven the way it is. Please look up that the dexterity and the order and the excellence in heaven is not just because God is there. There is a body of spiritual knowledge that makes the results that we find in heaven. Are we together? And he is saying now unto you inhabitants of the earth, it has been given that you can also come into a comprehension of the truths that govern the sphere of heaven so that you can reproduce the same within your territory. This is what it means, thy kingdom come and thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. So that when we handle this body of spiritual truth called the mysteries of the kingdom, we are able to reproduce the power, the prosperity, the grace, the possibilities that are only affordable in heaven. This is what makes us supernatural. The ability to transport a dimension of living 
that cannot be gotten from the earth realm. Are we together now? And the Bible tells us that these truths called mysteries, they are not mysteries because um, God enjoys them being secrets. Mysteries are a generic name that is used in the New Testament to capture a body of spiritual truth that can only be revealed by the Spirit. Are we together? This truth cannot be revealed just by education, secular enlightenment. It will take the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring the saints into the comprehension. That's why it's called a mystery. It's a body of truth that is privy to a people. Are we together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So it has been given unto us to know, to comprehend, to come into the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And when we have this understanding, the Bible lets us know that we will reign. We will be able to walk practically in dominion. Now, I want to share with us, because our time is limited, I will only take um, maybe one or two of these these keys that the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. And then afterwards, we'll just have some time to pray and trust God to bless our hearts. Hallelujah. I have studied my Bible by the grace of God and I have submitted myself to the wisdom that spans across the body. And I have learned from scripture and from experience that nothing in life is by mistake. Nobody rises by mistake, like I shared yesterday. Nothing happens by mistake. The Bible says to walk circumspectly, Ephesians chapter 5, as wise and not as unwise. And where is the wisdom? Capture all of the keys that can help you redeem time because the days are evil. So your wisdom is your ability to have dominion over time. Are we together now? The Bible says whoever can access the secrets that give you an advantage over time, you are walking in wisdom. Hmm. The greatest gift God gave man aside salvation is time. Are we together now? And the unit of destiny is time. Whatever affects your time affects your destiny. Are we together? And it so happens that our lives, um, many of us, uh, well, well, it's not the case in, in, in most parts of the, the, the West here, the, the Southwest, um, there's a, a heightened understanding of the things of God. So most young people grow up in families that know God. So it's very easy to connect them to the things of God. But it's not so around other parts of the nation. You would have to spend a very significant part of your life before you come into the knowledge of God. And already, just for, just for knowing God late, time is already against you. If you get born again at age 30, it looks like you are young, but it takes time to know God. It takes time to argue about the Holy Spirit until you finally open up your heart to receive him. And then taking advantage of the prayer language to build your spirit. And then you now, if you are fortunate to be under a pastor that loves God, it will save you years of error and deleting and rewriting and deleting. Are we together now? Please follow my teaching. We are talking about time redemption here. The Bible says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means you do not have time to dilly-dal and shadow box and guess around, make mistakes. You will not always have the time to correct it. So our work in this earth requires a measure of accuracy. And it says in doing that, you have dominion over time and you walk in wisdom when you master time. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you real estate. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you a political position. Ask a dying man what he would want. He will not tell you he wants more degrees and all of that as important as they are. A dying man's request is more time. Please look up. You have to understand this. The real asset of a believer is not just land. It's not just investments. It's time. 
whatever attacks your time has attacked your life. Time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to raise godly children. It takes time to build anything that lasts. It takes time to build a great church, to build a great business. And the devil is aware of this. So he helps you live a fruitless life by interrupting your time. Are we together now? If you do not understand this, this, um, this introduction, my message may not make sense. The secrets of the kingdom, among other things, help you to exercise dominion over time so that you can redeem time. Why? The days are evil. The days are evil. That means it is possible to be a graduate and just because your father had a vendetta with someone else, you will suffer for 20 years before you get a job because someone vowed to punish your father through you. Are we together? And if you do not know how to redeem time, you will be a victim of many things. Time. Why do we want to prosper? It's not just to prove a point. Prosperity has a, a unique ability to redeem time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The, the time wastage that comes when you are poor, many people have not reflected on it. If you reflect on it, you will hate poverty, uh, not just because, uh, how, I, I, hope, I hope I'm all right. Can I, can I? So when you hate poverty, if you just hate it because it makes you suffer, it's not, it's not a valid reason enough. You must be able to attack it from the interruption that it provides for your time. When you wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow, for instance, and then one day your little child calls you an uncle because it takes time to know your child. And the devil knows that once you have the keys in place, you will have time to serve God, you will have time to be serious. Notice, before I continue, once upon a time the nation of Israel, when Moses came to cry their exodus to Pharaoh, and he said, look, the God of the Hebrews appeared to me and said, let my people go. Pharaoh looked at him and said, ah, I see. We give you straw and you just walk. So you have a little time to call upon God. Now stop giving them straw. The time they used to pray, let them use it to look for straw. And immediately they told Moses, don't talk to Pharaoh again. We will remain in bondage. Time. Time is very, very important. Oh, teach us to number our days, he says. Not because we're afraid of dying. He says that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time. Why? The days are evil. Let me tell you what that means. By default, every man's life carries a disadvantage. Listen. Just follow me. You will understand what I'm saying. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means that when you have two people who have to live their lives by default, it's like making do with whatever grows in a farm. And what grows in a farm without being planted is weed. Are we together now? So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and his ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage. Are we together? That begin to correct the, the errors that I met. So you come from a family where the first person builds a house at 50. It's not a testimony. You come from a family where something is wrong when you are blessed early. You see, all these kinds of things. Now you 
Come to a point where you know the Lord and you love the Lord. And the responsibility is upon you to take advantage of the provisions that the kingdom provides to start correcting. This is why we have things like restoration. Restoration is a system of advantage. And I will restore what? The years. Not just the things. The years. Because when you lose time, you really lost. I will restore the years. I hope you know, um, please, next time I call two people, um, if you are not one of these gentlemen on suits, just, just sit quietly, huh? please. So let me have two people. I said it. Uh, please, come, sirs. Oh, no, no, no. Can I have a, another person? That Yes, come. Come. You two come. Thank you. Watch this. Let's celebrate them as they come. You stand here. You two stand here. Watch this. I want to illustrate something. Now, both of you just follow me carefully. This is, this is, this, this, um, two people living out their destinies. Let's start. Now, we call this delay. Keep going. This man wants to move forward, move slowly, but this one has been delayed for 10 years. If I remove the constraint and he's moving, this is progress, not restoration, because he's still delayed. There is a provision in the kingdom that can pick you and bring you back here. Listen, so that if, if you look at my life, you will not find the gap that the delay provided. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please come again, sir. Watch this. Again, we have two people. Let's, let's assume that they were married the same time. Okay, and then this man now has not been able to have a child. One year, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you give birth, it's a testimony, but it's not yet restoration. So when, because if you will space your children three, three years, under normal circumstances, you will need nine years from the time. Are you seeing that now? And so if God gives you triplets, he didn't just give you children. He did something to time. Please understand this. Now, this example, like many more, have in them shrouded the mysteries of the kingdom that help us. We engage these mysteries. It is because of this provision that the Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know. We are in the kingdom. And we know that all things, how many things? things. Can work together. Not for the good of everybody. For the good of them that love the Lord and them that are called. Did you ever read in scripture that those he predestined, he called? So who is the called here? It's not just a man of God. We have been called, grafted into glory. The Bible says for such people, the concept of being disadvantaged does not truly exist. In the presence of the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why sometimes you say, God, time has gone and he doesn't pay attention. It's because the provisions to remedy it are, are many. There are too many keys that can bring you back. Listen to me. God can keep you for a while while others are getting their jobs and moving. God says, just stay and know me. And you say, God, but I've already, my life. And God says, look, the kingdom we operate in is a kingdom of light. There are too many keys to bring you where you should have been. That's why when we don't trust God because we compare ourselves with others, the Bible says, and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. Is God speaking to us now? So you come to God and say, Lord, I lost one billion. He will not even answer you because the concept of, of losses is something leaving you, not leaving the earth. It's still there. And the Bible tells us, listen. Did you read in Ezekiel 37? That once upon a time there was a great army and they all became bones, scattered. 
You thought they were all gone, but all of them, the bones were there. And under a certain condition, not every condition, under a certain condition, the bones that you thought were dried, the Bible says, son of man, can these bones live? Even the prophet who was already used to spiritual things said, Lord, in this matter, only you, only thou knowest. It says, prophesy to the bones. Watch this. And he spoke to the bones and the Bible says the bones had him. They started coming one by one, bone to his bone. Then he says, prophesy upon the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon the slain. And then they became an exceeding great army. So when you say something left you, it didn't leave the earth. That means there is a condition that can make it come back. So that we don't lament like unbelievers. And the basis of our confidence is that we, we understand that in the economy of God, there is a way to do anything. Alas, master for it was borrowed. And he said, no problem, where fell it? And the axe head float, it floated right to the top and he picked it up. Are we together? When the Bible says all things are possible, it is true. But not under every condition. And I want to show you very quickly just two. Just two of the secrets of the kingdom. In addition to what the Lord showed us yesterday irrefutable principles that are backed up by God's own integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have to understand that these principles are not opinions. Please understand. They are not opinions. It's not something where let's try and see if it works. It truly does work. Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them and there is a guarantee that your profiting will appear unto all. May God bless you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Are we together? So let's look at two of them. Oh, dear. I'm wondering which one to omit and which one to talk about. <laughs> no. Praise the Lord. You see, our, this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by knowledge, Hosea lamented in chapter 4 and verse 6, he said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It takes knowledge to be able to reign. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of God is risen upon you. Are we together? I always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Rise to a new life. For the glory of the Lord is upon you. The Bible says, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles will come to your light. And their kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's examine the mysteries of the kingdom. Very quickly, we'll look at, um, we'll just look at two of them. Oh dear. Number one. It's called the law of value. It's one of the mysteries of the kingdom. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 15. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 18, 16. Proverbs 18, 16, the law of value. Very powerful scripture. It says, a man's gift makes room for him. Please look up. And brings him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him. Before then, there's no room for him. A man's gift makes room, creates space for him. Are we together? Will you be tired if I ask you guys to come again? Four of you, come quickly. Please come, come, sirs. Yes, come. All four of you, come. Let's celebrate them. I'm sorry, please permit me. Um, just, just stand close to me, all of you. Just stand facing the crowd. Everyone, look at this. 
So here's what the Bible says. Just compress yourself. There is no space for you anywhere. This is, call this the table of greatness. There's no space for you. That, that idea that there is a place for you is a psychological consolation. But in reality, there is no space anywhere. Here's what the Bible says. A man's gift will make room. Make room. There was no space for you, but it makes room. It will push people left and right and create your own space. The value... Value is defined as a measure of usefulness. Value is a measure of usefulness. To be valuable means to be perceived to be useful as far as the context of a territory or a civilization is concerned. It is very, very important because most believers... And, and Pastor Sir, I think um, you will agree with me that one of the challenges with the body of Christ is we have not paid attention to the secrets that make us dominate over the cosmos. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the advantage that the spirit realm provides, sometimes we negate the power of principles like value. And we have this understanding that things would just find their way to fall in place. But we're dealing with men. This is the cosmos, the world of men. And the Bible tells us that when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos, to be wise as serpent, and gentle as doves. A serpent is not a good reptile, but it says borrow wisdom from the serpent when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos. The serpent is disadvantaged in many ways. No hands, no legs, it crawls, yet you fear it. You have hands, you have the feet, and yet you fear that thing that just crawls. There must be some level of wisdom there. Dominion. When a lion kills its prey, you will know because blood will spill. When a serpent eats its prey, you will not find where it was or where the prey is because it does not leave the stain of blood behind. It swallows it wholly, and the digestion happens there. A lion will eat and crack the bones and leave the remains. There are many lessons to learn from the serpent that can help us work in victory over the cosmos. But that's not where I'm going to. The Bible says the value, the gift of a man, your value is not just a measure of your skill. Please look up. Every time I talk about value, I break it into two. The first real value you have is your virtue, not your transactable skill. Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. This is value. You know, many times when we talk about value, we think about our transactable skill, the intellectual prowess and all of this. These things are wonderful, but they are secondary. In the long run, your virtue is what gives you an edge as far as value is concerned. Are we together? Yes. You ask any blessed man, they will not tell you they are necessarily looking for a person of skill alone. But they, they would have been betrayed by many, many gifted rebels. They are looking for people who have virtue. Virtue is not cheap, and virtue is not for women. <laughs> virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Let me tell you this, when you contend to sustain the character of the Christ you become Beulah and Hefzibah. It becomes difficult to ignore you. The world is look, what the world is looking for in men is what only Christ can give. The fruit of the Spirit, your patience, joy, peace. This is what we seek for. You are valuable to the degree to which you Walk in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God to sustain the character traits that make you reflect Christ. Are we together? Now, you would think what I'm sharing is very cheap and very simple and very basic until you see what lack of the manifestation of the character of Christ can do to a man. Why do you lock 
your homes when you leave because there are people who don't have the fruit of the Spirit and you are aware of them. Are we together? Yes. Yes, sir. You came to church and yet you locked your car. Why? Because you are aware that there is an environment that may not exactly reflect your values. What makes heaven heaven? Because there is a system that judges rebellion immediately. Remember, we're talking about the keys that reproduce heaven here on earth. There was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged immediately. Notice that God is so secured, he never gets up from the throne to walk around heaven to check for loyalty. There is a system put in place. He is unperturbed, seated on his throne, yet rebellion is judged from any angle of heaven. That means you can sustain that same intelligence and save yourself the stress of policing people to check for loyalty. There is an intelligence you can employ in your business, in your life, that from where you are, you can detect rebellion. Are we together? Let me give you an advice. Deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Rebellion is not an advantage under any condition. You have a company and people are rebellious, let them go. Don't feel insecure, let them go. Whatever comes from rebellion comes pregnant. It will happen again. Hmm. Are we together? Yes. So your virtue, the character of the Christ... By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Not when you speak in tongues. Not when you pray. Not when you sow seeds. When you have love. There is a dimension of love, agape, that is not given unto men. It's the spirit of God that will shed that love abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. So when you sustain this character trait, how about being trustworthy? Imagine what you will do when you find someone you can trust. Genuinely and truthfully. Hallelujah. Then when we deal with virtue, we now deal with your skill, your transactable skill. But I think one, especially for our generation of young people, we have placed emphasis on transactable skills. Once you are educated, you have a master's, you have a PhD, it doesn't matter what spirit, what demon, what devil, what, I mean, nobody cares. I am skilled and I deserve to be at the highest position in life. No. You will get to a realm where everybody there is skilled. What then becomes your edge? There is a realm you get to where your transactable skill no longer becomes the basis of your lifting. It is your closeness to the character of Christ. Even non-believers are looking for Christ in everybody. Are we together? Let me tell you sincerely, if by this conference you trust God for grace to rise to a position where there is an appreciable dimension of the character of Christ. He said, my little children of whom I travail. Paul is speaking, until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. The formation of Christ. Ask any CEO here, he will tell you. The headache of every great man is not just skillful people. In fact, many times they become the trouble. The wisdom, the loyalty. Are we blessed? But I tell you this. You know you are valuable by who pursues you. If nobody is pursuing you, it's a report card that you are not valuable. All men seek for you. Listen, there are certain skills that when you have, only the rich will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the poor will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the educated will look for you. There are skills that when you have, only your tribesmen will look for you. But there are skills when you have, all men will look for you. All men will look for you. That was a testimony of Jesus. All men seek for thee. All men. 
All men, all nations, all territories seek for thee. Make up your mind that you will be valuable. The kingdom operates on a reward system. You know that. And it is, it is fraud to expect rewards when you are not valuable. This is true. We must contend to be valuable. Here is where our precious, superstitious Africa will continually be cheated. We have this understanding, you know, Africa, we're a wonderful place, uh, but we're also a very superstitious place. We believe that things can fabricate themselves. For years, we have been claiming Bill Gates' wealth. For years, we have been claiming the wealth of, um, what's his name again, Who all these great men. Until now, they are getting more blessed, whereas many people are getting frustrated because God is not a fool. He designed in this system that rewards follow value. Many people look at preachers and say, why, these people are just blessed for doing nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you why preachers are blessed once and for all, so that we'll just clear the air over this. <laughs> preachers are blessed because they are communicators of value. The value may be spiritual in context, but it is real value. Are we together? Number one, they connect people to faith, a relationship that is superior to any on the earth. Number two, they help to shape the mindset and the understanding of the people that makes for victory. That's real value. Number three, they are spiritual conduits that communicate the possibilities of God. A miracle, a sign, and a wonder cannot be bought in a bank, cannot be bought in a market. Whoever aligns with God to receive that grace and communicate the same is valuable. Are we together? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? The Bible gives you an assurance that you will stand before men, before kings, and you will not stand before mean men. Let me show you two scriptures very quickly and then we'll rush. I apologize, I would not take so much of the time. Uh, let's just work with what we have. Ready? Exodus chapter 4, please. Let's look at verse 2 and verse 17. Would you be a bit patient? Thank you. Exodus chapter 4. And the Lord said unto him, what is in your hand? And he said what? Let's go to verse 17 for time's sake. It says you shall take this rod in your hand and with it you will do signs. When you stand before Pharaoh, you are not allowed to speak too much. Let the rod keep doing the speaking. There must be something you carry that will continue speaking when your mouth is shut. Are we together? One of the principles of dominion is you must bet something out of you that immortalizes your impact. There must be a product or something that comes out of you that keeps speaking even when you are silent. Bill Gates is in your home. Zuckerberg is in your home. You drive him, he comes back. You bring him back by yourself. That's dominion. Are we together? You drive Coca-Cola and cause them and cause them and in three days they are back. <laughs> they don't fight you when you drive them because they understand the addictive power of their influence over you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And I hope you understand I'm not being sarcastic. You get the idea? Praise the Lord. Listen, say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be valuable. I obtain grace to be exceptional. Lagos is a good land, but the increase only looks for men of value. When you are valuable, listen, you know you are valuable when no no amount becomes too much to reward you. At that point, you are priceless. Look at this. If this handkerchief is, say, a thousand naira, please hold it. No matter how wealthy you are, you will not pay a million for this, ordinarily. Are we together? Why? Because you perceive that although it is valuable, it is not that valuable. 
Now, if you are this handkerchief in my example, people can give you a thousand naira, but when you demand for a million naira, they think it's unfair. I told you yesterday, everybody is a giver. Truly. Can you rise to a level of value that makes no price becomes unfair, uh, that makes for no price to become unfair on you? That someone can look at you today and still give you a property worth millions and, and say, please, let it be a privilege for me to bless you because you are that valuable. I made up my mind as a person that in the name of the Lord, I would not just be a preacher, but I would be valuable. That I would never have encounter with anyone and then you say, oh, it's nice to meet you. Go away. No. No. It's a vow and a covenant that I made with myself. So it calls for study. It calls to expand your understanding. As a preacher, you talk to all kinds of people. If you're a medical doctor, the limit of your profession is just around the hospital and all of this. But as a man of God, you're talking with diplomats, you're talking with business people, you're talking with politicians. You must sustain the intelligence that communicates God to their sphere. It is not an impartation. It is knowledge that is acquired. It's truth that is bought. This is what will make you valuable. And I tell you the truth, anybody, any preacher, anyone in ministry who is not ready to be valuable on this wise must be ready for empty pews. Your pastor is vast, intelligent, skilled. That's why you come here. That's why you love him. That's why no amount you sow into his life becomes a regret. You don't go back saying, I would have given, ah, was it a wise choice? You see, when you regret, it's not because you are not a giver. You compare what you gave versus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, may we sustain the grace to be valuable. Listen, there are many of us, we need to fold many complimentary cards, respectfully speaking, shelve them and go back to do our homework. There's no need going around and saying, look, I'm a great musician. You've not seen anointing till you invite me. If you have to market yourself on that wise, it's already a sign that you must go back and say, God, you called me. This, this, you called me. Place something both on my mouth, my lips. It says my heart is indicting a good matter. Yeah, I speak of excellent things. Then it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. Every good thing runs away from me. Lord, there is a dimension of value I need to step into. Praise the Lord. I can cook. Who eats your food? You see, if kings... I, I hope you don't find this insulting. I'm just stretching us. Now, listen, let me tell you this. Please listen. Hallelujah. Are we together? Until kings look for you, you are not there. The real wealth and honor is in the palace, not outside. So you can start from Shushan like Hadassah, but don't end there. You can even come close to the gate like Mordecai, but don't remain there. Your real honor happens in the palace. You have a business and kings have not turned their attention. You are not valuable enough. Keep pressing. While they are clapping for you, let them do the clapping while you do the growing. You will grow to a point when you feed kings, you will eat from the treasury of kings. It is very easy to rise when we contend to be exceptional. It was Dr. Murdoch that said, your similarity creates your comfort, but it's your difference that creates your rewards. Birds of the same feather flop together, but when they are hungry, they flop together in unity when they move. But when they are hungry, every one of them, I mean, geography tells us they have skills. They have different skills to catch prey. When you become like everyone else, you become easily replaceable. Let me define what it means. You see, 
To be valuable means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable. It is true that no man is indispensable, but becomes so difficult to replace that even after complaining, they'll say, well, there's nothing we can do. We will still have to make do with you. Please make up your mind that I will be valuable. Make up your mind. I will be valuable. That the day I have an interaction with my destiny helper, I will not talk to him twice. Once is enough. Hallelujah. The gift of a man. Let's do it one more time. Makes room for him. This is Lagos. This is your real estate company. This is your business. This is ministry. There is no space for you. And it has nothing to do with sentiments. But when God anoints you and you work on your skill, virtue, exceptional Christ-like virtue, backed up by intelligence that is beyond argument, you bring these twofold dimensions and life will shift and give you your space. It will not be an issue of tribalism. It will not be an issue of gender. There are not too many valuable people on earth. There are many human beings but there are not too many valuable people on earth. Nobody likes me. You may be right, but why should they like you? Forget about the liking part. Why should they like you? <laughs> it's an honest question you must ask. Why should, because it's fraud. When, if you follow me, how many of you, watch this, how many of you have climbed a bike or Uber or whatever, and then you, well, not Uber, they, they, they use the GPS system, but just a bike man, and he tells you he's taking you somewhere, he tells you he knows the place, and later on, he, he will pass the place and say, sorry, uh, you, are you new in Lagos? I say, well, you know how this thing is, I'm, I'm not, uh, where did you even say again? You see, the person was bold enough to start going, and look at the speed he was moving around, <laughs> And then you are just loitering around town. Your time is going. And then you ask him and then he will forcefully admit that I'm not exact. Let's help ourselves. Now, you don't follow such a person. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the levels of leadership that they teach in business is leadership by results. That people not only follow you because you are skilled and all of that. People need to see real results. And let me tell you, don't downplay the place of results. Nobody will follow anybody who doesn't have results. They may love you. They may pray for you. But they will not follow you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. I dare you. Follow me and I will make you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at... Oh dear. The second kingdom secret that I want to teach quickly, if we stop here, that's, that's all right. Please do not forget this one. In fact, let's, can we pray in tongues for one minute before I start teaching this? Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 9. I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Please write it down. We live in a world of men. Please understand. The earth, the heavens, even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. The cosmos is a domain that is controlled and managed by man. If you know God alone, you will do well, but you will not succeed in the cosmos. You need to know both God and man. Please listen very carefully. Hmm. Most believers say it doesn't matter. It matters. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. One king loves a woman and she becomes queen. The same king hates a woman and she ceases to be queen. 
please do not say it does not matter. The gatekeepers in this realm are men. And if you do not understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers, connecting every man from where you are to where you need to be is the ministry of a destiny helper. Let's hurry up. Second Samuel chapter 9, please. From verse 1. Please look up. Let me do the reading. And David said, Is there any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? We are reading the first 11 verses too. And there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Three. And the king said, this and that and that and that and then let's go to, okay, hold on, please go to verse 3 again. He said, and Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is what? Incapacitated. Someone is about to be lifted who does not have the ability in himself. Four. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodeba. And, the, and King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodeba. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. Be patient with the reading. David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely what? Show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will restore. This is, you see that now? I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? When it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough. Favor must be consistent. Continually. Read on. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. He would have said, you are speaking negatively. Get out of my palace. But when God plants a man's heart to be connected towards you, there is nothing the devil can do about it. Next verse. And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore, now look up please, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Look at this kind of thing. You sent me, I obeyed you, and now you are saying the man you sent me to bring. I and my sons will till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the, first, the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Joshua Selman, thy master's son shall eat all way at my table. Now watch this. The Bible ends this with a very terrible information that this Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So the king looks at a man with 15 sons, 20 servants, and says, leave all of them. Go to Lodeba. Go and look for a man crippled who has admitted he was a living dog. Bring him and he will eat at my table while you farm for him. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. In a moment, a man's life is changed because a man loved. See, the Bible says, and Jesus, Luke chapter 2, I think, and verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom, listen carefully, in stature and in favor with God. And when you have favor with God, you will know him. You will have encounters, but you will be broke. You will fail. You will suffer. You need favor with men. It's true. Please write this down. Destiny helpers are people equipped, empowered, ordained, and assigned by God. To help you fulfill your destiny. They are not people who just come. They are ordained. They are assigned. They are empowered by God. To help you fulfill your destiny. And also to take you to the next level of your life. 
Let's hurry up. You can get the tapes. It is God that blesses. But you would have heard me say it again and again that all blessings come from God through men to men. Nothing comes from God directly to men. It comes from God through men to men. Please say it one more time. Everybody, from God through men to men. Your promotion from God through men to men. Your property from God through men to men. Your miracle from God through men to men. If God says yes and the middle man says no, the answer is no. I wish I had time. Let's do a little Bible study. The Bible tells us, I would always want to use this scripture. Did you know that David in the wilderness, already God had rejected Saul as king. We are Bible people. Is that true? And now David was in the wilderness having visions of himself as the next king. And between God and David was a man called Samuel. God said yes. Samuel said no. David remained in the wilderness. David's life was being delayed and almost wasted in the wilderness because a man disagreed with God. And you thought that God would just bypass him and say, I am God. David, I anoint you. God had to come and plead with Samuel and say, how long will you weep? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king. God himself, not bypassing men. This is the world of men. Believers, please hear me. Our advantage is not just our spiritual connection, but our understanding that when God wants to lift you, he will connect you to destiny helpers. Hallelujah. There are four dimensions or four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run them very quickly in two or three minutes. Number one, the first dimension of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connector. Second Kings chapter 5. There's no need turning there. I'll just tell you the story. Remember the story of Naaman? The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war. But the Bible says he was leprous. Are we together now? And then the Bible says one time they captured a slave girl. And the little maid looked at him and said, Oh, that my servant, you know, that the king, that Naaman would go to meet a prophet and etc., etc. He argued here and there, but eventually he went to meet Elisha. And the Bible says when he came to meet Elisha, Elisha did not even go out to salute him. He told him, okay, go to the Jordan, bath seven times, you will be cleansed. And the man got angry. He said, I mean, uh, with my pedigree, this man did not even come out to acknowledge me and so on and so forth. And it was the little girl that also advised him. Divine connectors don't have what it takes to bless you, but they can link you with who has what it takes. Now, listen very carefully. These are the systems of dominion in the kingdom. They may not have a job, but he may be at the park holding a flyer. That doesn't make sense. Walk in Canada and he's waving it. He's a bus conductor and you are laughing at him. Yet you do not know that the vision you saw, that's how it will come to pass. You will collect that little thing and look at it and see a number and call jokingly. And that becomes the next level of your life. It takes discernment to identify divine connectors. Because they come in fashions that are not receivable. You will need discernment. A destiny connector can be your little child. He talks nonsense every day, except that that day, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Mommy, why don't we pray in this house? And you think he's just talking as a little child. And it's in that prayer you have the vision that will become a great business. You need discernment. Divine connectors. Many of us pass them every day on the streets of Lagos. The Bible says to learn from the ant. The Bible says to honor all men. Do you know why? Because the list of people can still be used by God. If God used a donkey, he can use a bus conductor. God can use the person plating you. And while they are gisting in the salon and you are listening, they will communicate one information that fills the gap you have been looking for. Sustain discernment believers. Divine connectors. Number two, very quickly. 
The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. These are gatekeepers. They have what it takes to bless you. They have the resources, the track record, and the credibility. No man thrives just like that. There are times that you have the skill and the gift, but you do not have access to the gate. You will need someone who is already at the gate to recommend you. Their voices, their track record, their credibility can speak for you and they can lift you overnight. These are men who can endorse you. One speaking over your life from them. There are people in Lagos, one signature can give you and your siblings a job. It's true. It's not an issue of a prayer point. The answer is with them. It is within their power. Sometimes believers say, it doesn't matter, God. It's only you I seek. You are right, but you are wrong. You are very wrong. And, and sometimes if you don't understand this, I tell you, since, listen, unbelievers know this. It's an advantage. They do not trivialize yes. men of influence. Men of influence. Men of influence. Many times we insult rich people, we insult blessed people, we, we neglect people's track records because we cannot see what happened. When they are in the cave of Adullam, you don't see it. You only see the manifestation. And you can see a blessed man and say, what is there? It was his father, not a rich man. If my father too was a rich man. And you see, the moment you dishonor men, you close the door for access. It's true. Isn't it amazing that in many territories it's foreigners that come and eat of the blessings in the land because the people there trivialize the nobles. I never see men of influence and pretend they are not there. I honor them vocally, unashamedly. I'm friends to politicians. I'm friends to men of... I'm friends with people in the military. I don't fight them. I don't curse them. They need me, but I need them. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to lie about. We live in a wicked world. <laughs> yes, sir. Are we together? The body of Jesus is hanging on the cross, pastor. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring the body down. Please do not reject influence. Joseph is dying with his dream in the prison. Pharaoh is there with one decree that can set him to be the prime minister of Egypt. But the middleman forgot. The middleman did what? Forgot. And then when God was ready to leave Joseph, he gave a dream that no astrologer could interpret. And when, can, can, look at this. Do you know that there are certain levels of influence if you don't rise to God cannot use you in certain ways? Because showing you the vision is useless. You don't have the influence to do anything about it. Listen, there were covenant people in Egypt Yet God could not come and give them the dream of the famine coming because they didn't have the capacity to do anything about it. So he came to the Pharaoh himself. And when the Pharaoh had, if Pharaoh, if the Israelites were disturbed about the dream, would anything be done? But when the Pharaoh is disturbed, he can shake his government. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God sent for Joseph, the king sent for Joseph, and they brought him out of his dungeon. Please understand this success system. It is a secret in the kingdom. This is what makes people to rise miraculously. One endorsement, please help this person, signed this and that. And the person looks at it and looks at you and says, whose son are you? You say, well, that's not the issue. Look, focus on what I brought. <laughs> Listen, I'm saying this so you don't pray carelessly. 
When you are praying, you don't just say, help us of my destiny, come. It's not a very wise prayer. You know what and who to call. Lord, I need men of influence in this season of my life. I have the grace, I can be on air, the world can hear me, but there is no one to connect me. And God says, I know how to make it happen. Come for Wafbeck. And whilst you are seated, pastor will say, turn to your neighbor. Be discerning. You don't know who that neighbor is. Maybe let's try. Turn to your neighbor and say, God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Forgive me, my time is up. I have to rush. Now, watch this. Please just lend me a few more minutes to just tidy this up. Look up, please. Men of influence, you must pray them in your life. Especially if you know that your background does not have any advantage. You know what I'm talking about. You must pray. Pray with understanding. Lord, take me out of this place. Someone can like you. And just say, I don't know, but something tells me to help you. When that happens after this conference, call pastor and say, pastor, that's it. It happened. It happened. Hallelujah. There are many ways to pay for things. The cheapest is through relationships. There are seven kinds of currencies. Money is the least of them. If you pay for everything with money, you are poor. Relationship is currency. Show me the receipt of the things that were bought by relationship. It's not always about money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three. The third category of destiny helpers that you need in your life, they are called gifted people. Sometimes you just need skilled people, not advisors, not, you need people who can get the job done. When I came to your church and watched the protocol, the greeters and all the wonderful people, I said there are gifted people in this church. You need gifted people because there are times you need results to be produced. There are companies wasting money every time because they hire all kinds of people that came by sympathy, they came by family relationships, and the long and short of it is that there's no productivity. You will need to pray, Lord, minimize my wastage by bringing people who are nations in one person. It's a real prayer. Let me tell you this. The biggest companies in the world do not necessarily have a crowd of people. They have a few people with the brain of nations. And sometimes you just need to pray and say, Lord, make my life easy. Bring gifted people to my life. Bring gifted people to my life. Bring gifted people to my life. Are we together? Yes. Yes. You will need very gifted people. Please write this scripture down. 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 17 and 18. Just, just leave it there. We we'll, would we'll not be able to turn there. 1 Samuel 16, 17 and 18. You need gifted people. I pray this as a leader. I pray this as a person. When you meet gifted people, Lord, send a gifted driver to drive me. It's a good prayer. You, you die for nothing because of someone's carelessness. Lord, send a gifted driver to drive the truck in my company. You don't buy a truck, 100 million, and somebody will capsize it in two weeks. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Send a gifted representative in my company. Not someone who goes and kills every... He closes the doors that God... You prayed, you fasted, you sowed, sees the doors open. He casually closed it back. Because he could not represent you well. It is great to find gifted people who love God and love you. Number four. The last category... Of destiny help us. This one, you have to pray it all the days of your life. They are called burden bearers. Burden bearers. Hmm. Who are they? 
They are trusted, please listen, and faithful people who will stay with you through the storms. They will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. The Bible tells us about um, a dear woman called Ruth. Remember the whole story? And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Let's keep reading in our minds. Your pain will be my pain. Your tears will be my tears. Let me tell you something. And if you find 10 of these people in your life, you are the most fortunate person alive today. It's true. Let me repeat it. If you find 10 of these people in truth, you are the most fortunate person alive today. Burden bearers are an endangered species. In the presence of interest, everybody is a saint. In the presence of interest, everybody loves you. But when you carry the cross, when you feed 5,000 with two fish, with five loaves and two fish, why wouldn't you be king? But when you carry the cross, only John will stand there. Be careful when men say, become our king. Because the same men will say, crucify him. Let his blood be upon our head. Every great leader knows this. The applause of men is not necessarily a reflection of their loyalty. If you have not joined me to cry, I don't trust you. No. I don't trust you. If the only thing you have eaten is my food, I don't trust you. If the only thing you have done is clap for me, I don't trust you. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please listen to me. Everybody in this life will at one point or the other go through situations and circumstances that may test and try your faith. Some of you are in one now. You will need the gift of men and women who can look at you and say, it was never about your singing. And I pray for you, may that person be your spouse. Because if that person is not your spouse, listen, there are times that even Jesus weeps. You don't weep because you are no longer the son of God. You weep because what is before you will require certain levels of sacrifice. There are times the company may plunge down and to your shock, you didn't expect it. There are times that you have things happen around your life. What happens at those times? You will need burden bearers. Let me tell you, these men will show up and stand with you and say, if you go to the prison, I'm there with you. Listen, Covenant Christian Center, don't just pray for burden bearers. Be burden bearers. Listen, I want you to get to a point where you love your pastor unconditionally. We live in a time now where everybody around, everybody is warning everybody, everybody is pointing fingers at everybody, you know, and all of that, and we have to be careful. Every great leader prays for people who love them unconditionally. Don't pray for burden bearers until you are one. Listen, my life's goal aside from being a man of God as I prepare to round up, it's not only to be a preacher and to travel and minister to people. I truly pray that God will make me a shoulder that many can lean on. Yes. When you hear me preach, you think I'm holding a rod. The Bible said, thy rod and thy staff. It's not only a rod I'm holding. I'm also holding a staff. Two of them are sticks, but they don't do the same thing. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Look at me. How many of us have been responsible for the prolonging of the pain of others? Whereas you would have been there to say, listen, 
I don't know what happened in the office. They said they charged you with fraud. I'm not interested. I just want to know you are fine. I hear you might go to the prison next week, but I'm here to say let's pray. I didn't come to argue. I didn't come to find out who is right or wrong. I just came to hold your hands, and while they cry, you hold them. You raised me up so I could stand on mountain. You raised me up. I am strong when I am on your shoulder. You raise me up. Listen to me. I'm rounding up. This is my final session with us. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. In this life, when you truly become a burden bearer, not just a destiny connector. I know we're all smiling here, but there are people who have been wounded through the years. And they are standing here right now saying, oh God, can I not trust one person in my life? Can I not open up my heart to one person and just cry and know that I'm safe while I cry? Men are men. And sometimes what they need is not argument. What happened? Why are you in court over the land issue? That's not the issue. Everybody is saying it. Say something else. Ah, I'm disappointed. You are a Christian. You are a lawyer. You were involved with this politician. You are a member of Covenant Christian Center. No. You should be the first person to say, it's all right. Don't explain. I don't want an explanation. I came here to hug you. I came with my husband to your house to let you know that though weeping endures for the night. Imagine what it, listen, imagine the power. Imagine what happens to a person when you stand there to be the ones for them. If you cry, cry on me. Let your tears fall on my shirt as I hold you. Let us cry together. You just lost your child. Why were you that careless? Didn't you see it in the spirit? That's not the time to talk. Please, I apologize. Can you spare me just one minute? Let me just drop this and then we'll round up. Listen, our world is full of wicked people. Our world is full of heartless people. People will clap for you when you are on the throne. Sleep from the throne. Don't just fall. Just sleep from the throne. And they'll say, I always knew you were not my king. I'm a young man, but leadership has exposed me to a lot. I can tell you when you find people who love you unconditionally, swallow your pride and pursue them. You will not find many of that kind in your life. You may find a worker in your company. He may not be very intelligent, but he's the one who when they are chaining you and the news is picking it, he can stand there and say they should pick my face too. It is a token of my loyalty. You have to pray for these kinds of people in your company. Pray for these kinds of people in your life. This is how I pray. I don't pray carelessly. Lord, send me divine connectors. Send me men of influence. Send me gifted people. But in all your sending, send me burden bearers. Jesus is on his way to the cross. And people are laughing at him. He's looking at those who ate his fish. He's looking at those who took this. Crucify him. And he said, can you help? No, I will not help you. Crucify him. The blood coming from a 33-year-old's body. And they said, I always knew. To the point that they said, release Barabbas. Although a criminal, we prefer Barabbas. Be careful when people clap for you. They can clap you to your grave. Listen, Covenant Christian Center. Jesus falls and cannot get to Golgotha. 
Remember, if he died not on a tree, he could not become a curse. Because the law is cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. But in the midst of that, a man came, Simon of Cyrene. That was Africa picking the cross and saying, Jesus, as a continent, they may run away from you, but Africa will take you to the cross. We partook of the sufferings of Christ. And that is why the glory that follows must come upon the continent of Africa. I can imagine the relief. Simon, you are helping Jesus. Don't put yourself into that mess. And he said, no. I've set my hand on the floor. And he dragged the cross. Listen to me. Hold hands with someone by your left and right. This is a very serious issue. This is 2020. I cannot promise you that you will not have challenges. I only promise you victory. But between the challenge and the victory, you will not only need God, you will need men. Not men who want you to discuss everything about your life. What happened that you are no longer working? The last time you were CEO, I saw something in the news. What is it? It's not always about what happened. Can it now be about you? I'm more concerned about your victory than the job. What happened? Hmm. These are the keys of the kingdom that help us to reign. I only gave you two of them, but there are many more. These are the systems of the kingdom. When I found this in my life, I vowed a vow. That Lord, if anyone is looking for a shoulder to cry, send me. Don't just send me to preach. Let me be a true confidant. Let me be one who can cry. I'm not ashamed and I'm not embarrassed. Let the world know that I not only preach, but I can help. We can cry together. Lift your voice and pray. Make me valuable. But send me help us, oh God. Send me help us in the name of Jesus. Send me help us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is someone praying? Send me divine connectors by the Spirit of the living God. Send me men of influence whose credibility and endorsement can lift me to another level. Send me gifted people to redeem time and produce efficiency. But my God in 2020, in all your sending, send me burden bearers. Send me burden bearers. Men and women who will cry with me, who will celebrate with me genuinely from their hearts. Let's just begin to thank God for what he has done. The Bible said he has visited and redeemed his people. Just begin to give him thanks for what he has done. Thank him for the word that has come forth. It is a demonstration of the care that the Father has for us, of the concern that the Father lifts up your hands and begin to thank him. Thank him. No man can receive anything except it is given to him from above. Lift up your hands and just thank him this afternoon. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you because you have visited and you have redeemed your people. And Father, for this we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll proceed on a break now and we'll come back at 5.30 for the evening session.
dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.